or for the withdrawal plan, uh, withdrawal plan. So what's your opinion about it? For example, like uh, what's your optimal energetic protocol after the surgery of radical recession of rectal cancer and uh, laparoscopy? I think the question is what is uh, our technique for colorectal surgery, for major colorectal surgery? In the past, this was always done as an open surgery, and an open surgery is very painful. So the gold standard for an open colorectal surgery was in the past, and I think is still now a thoracic epidural catheter. But uh, nowadays, many of these blocks are done well laparoscopically, and this means these are it's a so-called uh, uh, minimal and savvy technique, and this is part of the so-called so ERAS concept. It means intense recovery after surgery. Patients should be mobilized very early, and patients should have less pain. When you do uh, all the for all laparoscopic procedures, uh, you can be sure that the pain perception is much more lower compared to the open uh, surgeries. And therefore, when you do a laparoscopic procedure, uh, thoracic epidural would be too much. So we have now uh, uh, other alternatives. We have other uh, abdominal wall blocks. So there are uh, some studies show using the, the, the transverse abdominal plane block or the uh, quadratus umborum block or also the erector spinae plane block uh, as a uh, regional technique for analgesia after the laparoscopic colorectal surgery. And always, if you use uh, these uh, abdominal wall blocks, they should be part of a multimodal analgesia concept for post-operative patients. So you should use non-opioids, a lot of non-opioids as a base of analgesia. You should use perioperatively uh, uh, the trunkal blocks. And uh, with these trunkal blocks, probably you, you cannot uh, stop completely the uh, pain. You cannot make the patient pain-free. So you have used a small amount of opioids in addition to these patients. Okay, we're good. So the next question is a very um, technology, technique related. So uh, he asked that no root block may be the most reliable approach for an uh, energetic result in triangle blocks, but sometimes local anesthetics often diffuse into the spinal canal. So which may be very dangerous and even led to disaster. Is there any way to avoid this kind of a, a complication? Indeed, when we do a spinal or the epidural, it's, we wanted the local anesthetic to go into the spinal to, to block the spinal nerve. And when we uh, uh, paraspinal block, that means we inject local anesthetics more or less close to the spinal the cord or to the spinal nerve. Uh, and sometimes we want to have that the local anesthetics uh, blocks the spinal canal. For example, when we do a paravertebral block, we inject uh, around 10 or 15 ml of local anesthetic in the paravertebral space, and the paravertebral space is open to the intervertebral foramen. So we accept that when we do a paravertebral block, that the local anesthetics flow into the uh, foramen intervertebral and also block the spinal canal, but this is not of uh, clinical relevance. And I think if we do the newer, the paraspinal block, for example, the retrolaminar block, or we do an er uh, erectospinal plane block, we are moving more away uh, from the spinal cord and we are more distally from the spinal cord. And uh, I think even can, can, uh, if you can show or demonstrate in cadavers, that uh, some kind of local anesthetics is flowing into the spinal canal. The, the, the clinical relevance is, in my opinion, very low. So I have uh, no, I think there exists nearly no data that uh, this is a, a huge problem when you do the peripheral triangle blocks and the blocking of the spinal canal. All right. So the fifth, uh, the fifth question for you is that uh, blocks for post-operative analgesia after thoracolumbar surgery. So which one is better? Block at the lamina or block at the articular process? Block within 
Bora Colombo fascia. So what's the difference among those different approaches? I think uh, the person who asked this question means block of the lamina. This is the probably the retral lamina block. The block of the articular process, maybe this is the uh, thoracolumbar interfacial plane block and the block within the thoracolumbar fascia, this is uh, done by the erectospinal plane block. These blocks, uh, the, the end point of injection of the local anesthetics is very close together of all these blocks. But uh, for example, the retrolamina block is a block uh, uh, mainly uh, done in the thoracic area. The thoracolumbar lumbar uh, interfacial block is a block for the lumbar area and only the erectospinal plane block is a block which can be done uh, in the thoracic uh, lumbar area. So uh, the clinical effect of all these blocks is nearly similar to the same. It depends on the volume which I use, and it also depends how reliable with these blocks uh, can be blocked the spinal, the, the spinal nerves, and how reliable uh, with these blocks can be blocked the sympathetic uh, fibers, and therefore we can produce a complete visceral and somatic analgesia. Very professional, yeah, very impressive. Um, still, many uh, many audience from many countries to ask questions. So I, I I get a list of like uh, thirty of them. So I don't I don't <laughs> think now we, we we have enough time for that. So, but I will choose some very important for you to answer. Uh, the, yes. So the next one, uh, the same uh, the same topic like um, uh, for Columba fascia block. There are two different orientations. The one is parasagittal, the long axis one, and uh, the next is transverse, the short axis one, lap load to medium approach. So which, which, which approach do you prefer in your clinical practice? So why? So in my clinical practice, I absolutely prefer the uh, transverse approach to the, when I do a thoracolumbar lumbar interfacial plane block. I have no or less experience with the uh, parasagittal approach I think most of the publications also uh, are based on the transverse uh, approach for the thoracolumbar interfacial plane block. Okay, good. Um, the next one is from uh, from a doctor in Indonesia. So his question is that uh, if we perform PAX1 or PAX2 for the breast surgery, should I do general anesthesia? Normally, in our department here, we use these blocks not as a sole anesthetic, but we use it uh, in combination with uh, general anesthesia, and we use it uh, mainly for post-operative analgesia after breast surgery. Okay, okay. So what, what's the difference between them? So uh, um, the PAX1, the advantage of the PAX1 and PAX2, the advantage of PAX2, there are any I think the PEX, yes, the PEX-1 block is, I, I think is a block which can be used only for very minor procedures. We use it, for example, the most we use it uh, for port implantation in, in cancer patients. Uh, these are completely pain-free, but you have to inject, infiltrate the skin because the skin of the breast from the, uh, uh, is innervated by the supraclavicular nerve from the cervical plexus. So if you do a cervical plexus and you do a PEX-1 block, uh, you can do minor breast surgeries, but the PEX-1 block does not cover any uh, uh, skin. Uh, so normally, usually we combine always PEX-1 with PEX-2 when we have a, a, a pain-free patient after breast surgery. All right, okay, good. Um, the next question is about, uh, is that what are the reliable indications for a successful block of the posterior branch of spinal nerve with block at the articular process? The rise of erector spine muscle, is there a point? I yeah. Yes, it's, uh, I think uh, we can block the posterior branch, uh, the, post the ramus posterior of the spinal nerve with uh, some this different kind of uh, the so-called paraspinal blocks. This is the retrolamina block. This is the thoracolumbar interfacial plane block, the erector spinal plane block. With all these blocks, we uh, reliable block the 
the posterior ramus of the spinal nerve. It means we block, we have the skin blocked in the back of the patient and the skin of the autochthonous uh, uh, back musculature. Uh, if there is a, a preference to one of the other of these blocks, as I mentioned before, the erector spinae can be done in the whole at the whole length of the, the column vertebra and the uh, Retrolumina is uh, preferentially done in the uh, thoracic area and the uh, torque lumbar interfacial plane block in the lumbar area. But with all of these blocks, you consistently block the posterior, the, the dorsal or the posterior ramus of the spinal nerve. Okay, great. So I, I think uh, Professor Lau, uh, do, do, do you have any uh, comments on this? Professor Frank. You can open your microphone. Yeah. Please. Yeah. From the beginning, we we usually block nerves, and today we we block the faster. We perform the faster block. So today, by the lecture, we've learned a lot, and a lot of questions be answered by by by, by your lectures. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll continue. Yeah. We'll, also, we have uh, other questions. And um, the next one is about um, there are many triangle blocks commonly under clinical practice. It is quite difficult for, for us to figure out which one uh, uh, figure out the essential relationship between them. So, can you just give us uh, an ideas of this? To answer this question might be a little bit difficult because we have so many blocks and uh, nearly every week or every month, someone is publishing a new kind of block with a new uh, insertion of the needle somewhere else. Uh, we also have to keep in mind what I have shown in one of my slides uh, that we have for many of these blocks, we have a lot of case reports or only case series, but these uh, blocks are not validated yet. That means we need, if we want to say if a block works very well for a special kind of operation, we have to compare this block against systemic opioids. This is the first, and then we have to do comparative studies with this new block compared to the uh, old-fashioned blocks for this kind of operation and then when this block will work very well and it will show that this block works better then we can say this is a very new well working block so uh, I think uh, when I look at all the the new uh, thoraco lumbar uh, abdominal wall blocks for me, the erectospinal block has the potential to become a very interesting block because we can use it for so many different kinds of operations. And uh, especially in the thoracic area, it is a very superficial and a very easy uh, uh, block. And uh, you can see very nicely the, the needle and the advancing of the catheter is also, can also be very nicely seen. And this uh, thoracic erectospinal plane block has a very low risk profile. So this is for me a block maybe with a high potential and also in the thoracic area you can do this block for major upper abdominal surgeries. So also for these kind of procedures when uh, uh, more riskier blocks like the uh, uh, thoracic epidural is not indicated this block can be done. So we do, for a lot of minor abdominal surgeries in our department, we do this block bilaterally, but you have to keep in mind, when you do it bilaterally, uh, you, you have to take a high volume of local anesthetics and then the patient is at a higher risk of uh, systemic intoxication. But uh, I sometimes I hear a lot of criticism about the new triangle blocks because these blocks are all interfacial blocks that means you need a high volume. All these blocks are high volume blocks, especially when you do it, uh, these blocks bilaterally. And this is not this is uh, indeed in contrast to our uh, practice with ultrasound. When we use ultrasound for nerve blocks, uh, the major one of the major advantage compared to nerve stimulation was 
that we can reduce the amount of local anesthetics to nerve stimulation uh, uh, so far. And uh, now we are, uh, for example, when we do an interscaline block with nerve stimulation, we have to use around 40 ml of local anesthetics. Now, with the, uh, in the area of ultrasound, we can use 8 to 10 ml of local anesthetics. But now when we are uh, talking about the interfacial plane blocks, which are blocks, uh, most of them are created in the area of ultrasound, we have to use lo a large amount of local anesthetics, 30, 40 ml. And if you do this block bilaterally, we have to use 50, 60 ml of local anesthetics. So we have to keep in mind this, uh, that patients with these interfacial plane blocks, these newer blocks, are at a higher risk of uh, local anesthesia intoxication. Yeah, good, good. So let's move on to the next one. Um, because there are many uh, beginners who start to learn uh, chunko blocks, they want to get advice or suggestions from you for some important tips and take home messages. So do you have suggestions for them? First of all, you must know uh, to, uh, you must know your uh, machine, you must know how to do an uh, ultrasound guided block. You must always know where is the needle tip. Uh, this is, for example, one of the reasons why we, the, the incidence of, uh, of nerve damage is not lower up to now compared to nerve stimulation when we compare ultrasound with nerve stimulation because uh, many of the users of uh, the ultrasound technology do not know when they advance the needle, where is the needle tip. The second is you have to know to use the right block for the right operation. And uh, for my advice would be, we have, because we have so many of the uh, thoracic abdominal wall blocks, you should focus on one block for thoracic procedures maybe, one block for abdominal procedures, and maybe also we have alternatives also for uh, lower limb blocks, for example, when we do uh, uh, hip surgery. For the thoracic area, Probably the, uh, the erector spinal plane block is a good block to learn. Maybe also the PEX blocks or the serratus anterior block. Serratus anterior block is also a very good alternative for, uh, for uh, chest pain. And uh, for the abdominal wall block, you can use also the erector spinal plane block, or you can use the tap block, even if you know that the the, the analgesic potential of the tap block is not very low, but if you use a tap block uh, and compared to a patient with no tap block, you have an opioid sparing effect, effect of around 30%, and this can be important in some patients. And for hip surgery, for example, uh, in the past we used the uh, uh, lumbar plexus block or femoral nerve block, but we have a lot of alternatives for hip surgery, for major hip surgery, we can use a supraingual uh, fascia aliaca block, or we can use an anterior quadratus lumborum block, or we can do a lumbar erector spinal plane block. Lumbar erector spinal plane block and the uh, anterior quadratus lumborum block, these are blocks we are do more and more often in patients undergoing major hip surgery. Yeah, more useful information for all of the beginners who start to learn jungle blocks. Um, there is a question from the audience directly. Uh, he is asking regarding of the uh, This is very difficult from the pronunciation vocabulary. Uh, I try to. I will try my best to 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 uh, pronounce it. So, what's the best uh, approach for nephrectomy? Nephrectomy. Yeah, I think. Nephrectomy for for kidney. Yeah, kidney, relating to kidney. For kidney surgery, yes? No, kidney surgery, yes. The so patient, for major kidney you know, surgery, nephrectomy, what is yes, the, uh, nephrectomy. the question is, what is the appropriate or the best approach for the... Uh, yeah, the best uh, for nephrectomy, nephrectomy, uh, nephrectomy, a patient... Nephrectomy, yes, for yeah. nephrectomy. Patient uh, posterior or lateral. So what's your experience of uh, catheter insection is 12B? Uh, for nephrectomy, the gold standard in the past was uh, the uh, uh, thoracic epidural because it's a very painful procedure. With every breathing, the, 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 nephre the, the kidneys are placed just close to the diaphragma and with every breathing you will feel pain. Therefore, uh, patients need uh, a real 
well working block and uh, in the past thoracic epidural was a gold standard but now in our department here we uh, move away from the thoracic epidurals we move to uh, thoracic uh, epi uh, erectospinal plane block or you can use also an uh, anterior quadratosombora block and you can also use uh, uh, I think the uh, thoracic erector spine is more appropriate because the uh, the uh, quadratus and boron block is uh, placed more closer to the to the, the to the operation side, and the uh, thoracic uh, uh, erector spinal plane block is a little bit more away. And even when you place a catheter, it doesn't hurt the, the operation. So these are the two options, uh, two real very good options in patients undergoing nephrectomy. All right, very useful information for, for the uh, anesthesiologist who want to do uh, such kind of a surgery. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't think we have enough time, but uh, I got the last question for you. Okay, uh, yeah. I think time is up. So the last question is about, um, would you choose one of QLB or a fascia ilica block for a neck of femur fracture or keep replacement? Is the guardian of uh, keep, re keep re replacement? Yes, I think I answered partly this question with my uh, last answer. Uh, for major hip surgery or neck fract hip neck fracture, I think uh, the uh, supraingual fascia iliaca block is an uh, attractive alternative and also the uh, anterior quadratus umborum block or the uh, thoracic or the lumbar erector spinal plane block. These three, these are three alternatives for the, uh, uh, or these are analgesic options, very well working analgesic options in patients undergoing major hip surgery or proximal femur fracture or something else in this area. Okay, okay, very professional, yeah. Okay, okay. I think uh, time is up, so, um, uh, let's say many thanks to you, uh, uh, Professor Paukes, and to Flag, uh, Professor uh, Frank Law. And also, thanks to all the audience who are with us today. It's time to say goodbye. So wish you all have a pleasant day, nice day. So if you want to uh, follow Wisani, we have Facebook or uh, LinkedIn for all of us to follow. Uh, all of the webinars in the coming days. Uh, do you have any comments, Professor uh, Kessler? No, thank you. I would like to thank uh, uh, Wisonic for organizing and inviting me for this uh, webinar. I enjoyed it very much and uh, very, very interesting questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Professor Law for the nice introduction also. Law. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye, bye bye. See you next bye -bye, time. Bye bye. Yes, bye bye. Bye bye. It's finished now? Yeah, it's finished. It's finished now.